<laughs> it's amazing. Oh, thank you. All right, today we are making a Valentine's Day outfit with this McCall's pattern. I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to be cute. We are starting brand new, which means I'm going to have to cut out every bit of the pattern myself right now. Love it. We are using the Mouse Waffles candle at the moment from um, Magic Candle Company. Not sponsored, I just want people to know about my candles. Okay. So I opened up the patterns and I quickly discovered that it's got this weird underlining as well as a lining. So I quickly folded those up and put them away. I don't need that because this isn't actually a fancy dress. I'm not using fancy material. We just need one lining. I always do a big cut around to get the pieces out and then cut around the lines. I've talked about this before. It technically adds an additional step, but it makes it so much easier to get these cut out properly on the lines because there's just so much paper in a pattern, which makes sense. Um, a lot of people sometimes will leave the big edges and pin it on the fabric and then cut everything out like that. I personally don't recommend that because it's hard to line everything up and be as space effective on your fabric as you can when you have those big extra ends, but you do you, live your best life. I just think it's better to get it all done right away. Still not done. There are so many pieces. Well, actually, that's an over dramatization. There's actually not a lot of pieces compared to other patterns. I was pleasantly surprised. There would have been more if I kept those underlinings, so shout out to me for not doing that. Future Justine loves you. I check things off as I go, and that's why I make sure I don't miss anything, so I never ever have a skipped fabric piece. Now, I knew I was going to need a lot of space, so I did this for the first time ever. I cleaned off my desk so I could lay my fabric across the entire thing. I just need a cutting table, but whatever. I've got about 5,000 yards of this fabric. It's really not the fabric I should have used, but I decided because it was going to be the underlayer, it didn't really matter. And if it gets a little wrinkly, I, I think you won't be able to see it. It was a dream to work with though, so I'm not really mad that I picked it. I got all the pieces on. It was important to make sure everything could fit before I started cutting, although I knew with the white there'd be no issue because I have literally like six meters of this fabric because I thought I was going to do a full length skirt instead of the half length at first. We get it all cut cut, very easy. I did the interfacing next because I knew I was only going to need a couple pieces. This would take me like 30 seconds. I'm not super precise when cutting this out because you can always trim it later and it doesn't always need to go right to the edge. The lining is the exact same cutting pieces as the ones we just did, so I'm not going to show you that, but this is where I was cutting the lining. And next was to cut out the red fabric to go on top. Now I'm going to be honest, this fabric was a nightmare to work with, not because it's bad fabric. It's lovely, it's soft, it's beautiful, just by very nature of what this fabric is, it's garbage and I suffered through every bit of using it from cutting to sewing, but sometimes you have to suffer for your art. So I did the skirt pieces first because I had less of it so I wanted to make sure for sure I had enough. And this is where we ended up the first day. Every single bit is cut out and we're ready to sew for tomorrow. So up first were darts on the front and back. I have this pen that is supposed to air dry and it does for every other fabric, but um, not for this one. So unfortunately there are little purple dots if you look really, really close, so don't look close. <laughs> it's very easy to sew with this broadcloth fabric. It's just, you know, whatever. You stick it through, it goes. We were living the dream. More darts and you can kind of see how I create them. I have multiple straight edge tools because I can't draw a straight line to save my life. And then we sew the back ones in. These ones were taller. Now the pattern wanted me to put in the zipper now, which I have never done a zipper quite this early, but I listened. So it's pinned in. I had to taper it into the seam at the end, which is why you see that little slant. We actually had no issues with the zipper going in at all, which is rare. Separating zippers are so nice to put in. So 
So we pressed that down and we did the second side. I lined it up first and then I opened and removed the zipper and continued to pin and sew. That way they were like perfectly lined up on both sides, hopefully. I'm still an idiot. And then we did the shoulder seams together. I did both of them at once, so now we have a front and a back sewn together. And then you make the lining, which you do the exact same steps as you're seeing me do right now. So I, again, will not make you see that. You just obviously don't put a zipper into the lining. So now we have the lining and we are going to sew the two of them together. This is a lot of seams to go through. So I just sat down, I pinned it all at once, doing notches and seam first. I actually cut notches into this pattern, by the way. I didn't say that earlier. I usually don't do that. It was pretty helpful. I should. Um, but yeah, you just, just everywhere. Everywhere except for the two side seams under the arms. It literally cost me all of my pins from the box to get this done all at once. And then I just started sewing. I started with, I think this is the arms. Yeah, I started with the arms and then I worked out from there. I took out the pins as I went, so slowly there would be less and less. It said to trim the seams, but it didn't specify which, so I just trimmed them all before turning it inside out and giving it a good little press to make it all nice and flat. I didn't quite understand how it wanted me to close the side seams, so I just sewed both of them closed on one side and then folded over the remaining side and slip stitched that together to keep it closed. It worked fine and it, it looks nice, like it doesn't look like it's been slip stitch closed with the red over top, so it worked out nicely. I'm just not sure if that's what the pattern actually wanted. But you know what, sometimes I'm a rule breaker, I'm a little edgy, a little crazy, so whatever. <laughs> I do hate hand sewing though, so if there was a way to do this without hand sewing, I'm going to be mad if I find that out. <laughs> Alright, time to work on the red. So we start with the same process, we need a dart. You cannot draw on this unless you're using a sharpie, and obviously I can't do that in the middle. So this was quite difficult to do, honestly, and again, it's just a nightmare to work with. It slips around and it's a little stretchy, so I was not enjoying myself. The pins also won't stay in with just like this two little layers, so I couldn't pin it, which is why you see me like finicking with it a lot. I just had to put it through and manually line it up. So I did the darts and then I sewed the pieces together like with the front and I started to roll the hem but I realized pretty quickly that I, I really didn't like the way that looked. It looks quite bulky and it's going to be right on my stomach. So I had to figure out something else because it can't be unfinished edges. I eventually decided to just curl it under and you're probably wondering why I didn't just serge it and it's because I, I wanted it to look like it was over top. I didn't want it to look like it was like the white and the red were one piece. So this is what we got done. We have got uh, a pinned edge and we've got a full under, like the white's done. And then it was time to just sew it all together. So first I hand sewed the white to the zipper to close that up, which I hadn't done in the first place just in case I needed that for however I put the red on top, but I obviously didn't. This got nicely pressed before I continued on. We did the next zipper side, very exciting. More of the same stuff, just tons and tons of hand sewing. Honestly, I wish I had surged the red to the white when I got to hand sewing all of this in place because it really sucked. I next sewed the red to the other side of the zipper, so that was nice and flat. This is probably, I think, the ugliest of the outfit because you've just got, like, red stitch lines you can see through. It's a, it's a mesh. But it's what we had to do because I chose not to surge. Beautiful. We love it, I guess. <laughs> Other side, same thing. 
It honestly, it I suppose it could have been worse. I did really small stitches to kind of help hide it. Next, we had to do the inside, and of course, it needs to be rolled over so it actually looks like a finished edge and not just like open tool on the inside of my dress. So I did that as I was sewing. Probably not the easiest way to have done this, but I didn't can it rolled in the first place because sometimes I'm an idiot. So I just did the bottom, I did the top edge, and then I did the two sleeves, making sure to check the front side as I was going, that I wasn't sewing all the way through, and that it was still sitting nicely on the front fabric, it wasn't being pulled too tight or tugged in the wrong directions. I only messed up once, and it's on the neck edge at the back, I went all the way through so you can see one red stitch. I stopped to make some tea in my color changing Disney mug. It is a decaf hazelnut chai, if you're wondering. <laughs> and then we went back to hand sewing. God, I hate hand sewing so much. I had thought I was going to stop after the hand sewing today, but the day after this I had my vaccine and I knew that that day and the day following I wasn't going to want to sew much. So I was like, I need to get done as much as I can today to kind of uh, make up for that. So I moved on to the skirt, you sew the back panels together first, stopping at where you're going to put the zipper, obviously, you don't want that sewn together. So we pinned and then we brought out the machine to sew. Very easy to work with this again. It's a nice break from the red, which is so awful. Oh my God. So we ironed open the seam. And, well, we took out the pins first, obviously. And then we did the front to the back at the sides and you just sew them fully, no need to stop because there is no zipper. So you pin that together again, obviously. And then we went over and sewed both sides at once. Very nice, smoothly going through. Then you iron them open again and you make the lining which is once again the exact same thing that you just saw me sew so i won't make you see that now it's time to put them together at the hem this is so much fabric to like pin it seems endless at the bottom but it's gonna make it nice so we pin 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 so much pinning and then we sew that together And then once it's sewn, I trimmed off the seam allowance to hopefully make this as not bulky as possible. And then this is what we got done. The top is totally finished. The skirt looks like a tube. It will look better once it's properly gathered, I swear. Um, all in all, not a bad day's work. Okay, so I came home after my vaccine and my arm wasn't hurting too much, so I did some work on the red. This is obviously we are sewing it the exact same way we just sewed the white skirt. Um, so nothing too exciting. We, at the back pieces, left an open spot for the zipper once again. And we couldn't pin, so once again I was just finicking over and over. The Mickey candle ran out after weeks of use, so we have now moved to the Haunted, which smells like Haunted Mansion. I actually really love this candle, I've been enjoying it ever since. For whatever reason, it messed up at this top edge. I don't know why we've sewn this material normally and clearly it started to sew it again, but that was frustrating. We had to roll this edge under, there was no other way to finish this hem, but I also, because it's at the bottom of the skirt, feel less gross about it, it's not right over my torso so in kind of in your face. So we went ahead and sewed all the way around. My pins were backwards, it was very annoying. And then as I pulled it free, I clearly realized that the bobbin had run out and like none of it had been sewn. And you don't know how irritated I was. So I went through to figure out what it had accomplished and all that had been done was like, that much. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I went through it again after winding my bobbin. I did not want to put the pins in again. I should have, but I didn't. So we just finicked and went all the way through once again. I was in pain and my headache was coming back by this point, so I didn't have a lot of patience. So I decided the last thing I would do was just baste this 
into the white fabric to get ready for gathering and the waistband tomorrow. It's just two very wide stitches along the top. I honestly don't know how far apart they're supposed to be from each other, but it always works out for me, so whatever. We stick it through once it's all pinned. Thanks to the white, it made it much easier to sew the red. So once it's on top of something, not so bad. And again, that meant it would have been nice if I had just surged it up top. But whatever, Justine, you had to be annoying. Two gathering lines. All right, so this is the end of this day. We still have a tube, but at least it's covered in red. We are gonna have to shorten the white as it's sticking out beneath the red. I don't know how that happened, but whatever. That's later Justine's problem. So this is day after my vaccines. Once again, I was not going to be doing a financial work. I actually felt much, much worse. My almost was me and I felt pretty unwell, but I got better the day after, so that's good. So we just did the waistband. I put the red onto the white like a smart person this time. It doesn't need to drape because the waistband is so tight anyway, so it didn't really matter. And then we sewed the two sides of the waistband to the front. This was all very easy thanks to having the broad cloth white along with the red. No struggling at all. So we sewed both of them and to make sure there's as little bulk in between as possible I trimmed off the excess tool that was out of the way did that for both sides before I pressed them and made them neat then I pressed over the top edge and gave it a trim I didn't trim it as much as I usually do because I didn't want to lose that stitching line that was holding down the tool but things that turned out okay either way so I'm not super worried about it now it was time to gather the skirt. Oh my god, and this is when I realized I should have done different gathering lines for each panel, but I forgot. So I was just very careful. I switched sides often, and then I got it to a point where I thought it would fit in the waistband and started pinning and adjusted as I went. This is our final gathered pin. Looks pretty good. I sewed it next, but clearly forgot to move my camera to the proper angle, so you just get to see me taking pins out but trust me, I sewed it. And then I very quickly did the hem of my skirt, but for whatever reason, it broke my needle when I first started, even though this was like a brand new needle. And when I put in the new one again, it just, it went fine. It's the same fabric, the same density. So I don't know why the heck it just had an issue for a second. And that's where I stopped for today. It's looking much better with the gathers and a petticoat underneath. The waistband will obviously get thinner and that will look better then. And we clearly have a red that goes longer than the white now, which is what I wanted in the first place. Very nice. All right, time to put in a zipper. This actually went better than a lot of zippers usually go for me, especially in skirts. Um, I have no big complaints. The first side that I put in was perfect didn't need to redo anything. It was very annoying to get my zipper like lined up properly once I was over at the machine, but with some, you know, finagling, it worked out. Oh, look at that, it's so crisp. And then it was time to do the other side. So I got it all lined up properly, made sure they were both sitting in the exact same spot, pinned it once again, and then took it to the machine to sew. Woohoo! Unfortunately, put the pins in backwards, which made this very annoying to sew, but it happens sometimes, I guess. And while it looks great on the outside, I realized very quickly when I was pinning it to hand sew that I accidentally pinned the lining or sewed the lining to the zipper. So I had to rip that out and then re sew the zipper, and then I could start pinning it once more. But as far as mistakes go, that's not too bad. So we're pinning it in place once again so that we can do our big hand sew of the entire inside of this skirt, which is the very last step. God, this was a heavy hand sewing day. I think the top though beats when I had to sew down all that red. That was awful. 
I did the two zipper sides first to get those done all nice and neat, get it closed up, and to make sure that I could still move the zipper up and down after doing it, you never want to put it too close to the zipper, obviously. Look at that, crisp, we love it. And then we pinned down the waistband. I pinned it first and then I pressed it to make it obviously a nice, even and crisp top waistband line. Um, nothing too exciting about this. It was just pinning and a lot more hand sewing. I sometimes just think, why don't I just let this thread show through to the other side just so I don't have to do it to hand sew. Um, but I know it does look neater without, so fine. I just had my YouTube videos on and I powered through this. It wasn't super difficult because of all the layers. I didn't have to worry about going all the way through to the other side, so that was nice at least. Look at that. That's all we got left. We're making such progress. We just keep going. Taking care to catch both the white and the red from the waistband and obviously not go all the way through to the front on the bottom. Not as difficult as when I was sewing the top though. This was like a breeze to do that. Oh, look at that. We've just got the one edge left. Oh my god. There were no issues with the hand sewing, nothing messed up or anything. I did bleed at one point though. And there it is. Oh my god. Let's see it on. Thank you to my roommate Lucy who came out to get these video shots of me. They did a great job. I'm super happy with how this turned out. The top is a little shorter than it appears it'll be in the pattern, but I'm still happy with it. The skirt comes up nice and high. I just have to keep in mind when I raise my arms not to raise them too high. The red looks amazing. Uh, it does look over the top like I wanted and I'm just so happy.